is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brandy 2023 nissan sentra courtesy of younger nissan in frederick maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because this is an extremely good looking compact car in my personal opinion it will be competing with other cars like the toyota corolla like the honda civic but this one actually starts at under $20,000, which is almost unheard of these days. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are a few different trim levels for the 2023 Sentra. First one being the S starting at $19,950, which is a modest $440 price bump from the 2022 model year, but yet still under $20,000, which is pretty dang cool. But SV trim level for $21,170, SR for $22,840, and lastly, the SR Midnight Edition, which is the one we are in today, starting at $23,535. So regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Sentra is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder, putting out 149 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 146 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. Power is gonna be sent to the front wheels through a CVT. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.2 seconds according to car and driver. With MPG numbers coming in at 29, the city 39 on the highway for the S and SV trim levels. However, for the SR that is gonna differ slightly coming in at 28 in the city, 37 then on the highway. But either way, taking regular unleaded fuel. So that's gonna save you some money there. But so anyways, before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our Sentra, I did wanna to mention to you guys the drive mode. There are a few of them. There is normal, of course, which is what the Sentra naturally defaults to. There is an eco button kind of by the driver's left knee. And then there is a hidden sport button, which is a horizontal line located on the shifter. So I'll show that to you guys real quick, but it's kind of hidden. It's pretty cool. But anyways, this drive mode is essentially adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response. And now that we got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the Sentra here to the test. And let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 Nissan Sentra here up to speed. All right, so just push that horizontal line so we are in sport driving mode in three, two, one, yeah. Wow, instant, mics. Yeah, that's, I, honestly, it's not bad. I mean, it's not the quickest thing in the world. I did like the instant punch, so if I were to describe the acceleration on the center, I would say it's peppy. So at lower speeds, instantly throws you, but as you get higher up in the RPMs, you notice that it's not maybe as quick as some of the other cars out there, but it's still plenty powerful. So it's enough to merge you onto the highway. It's just not, definitely not the quickest thing out there. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important as we are coming up to a red light and braking ourselves. So anyways, braking configuration is gonna differ amongst the trim levels, believe it or not. If you go with that S trim level, it's gonna be a front disc rear drum configuration but if you were to go with the sv or sr trims you're going to get four wheel disc brakes now as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes for the four wheel disc brakes it actually comes in at an insanely impressive 114 feet that is a sport sedan good number so typically with sedans you're going to find the 120s usually all the time you're going to find the 120s with suvs you're going to find the 130s but with sports sedans typically you find in the one teens and that is what the center has so I absolutely love that number. And as far as braking feel goes, it definitely leans on the firmer side of things. So it does instantly bring you to a stop. There's no soft spots or dead spots in the braking feel whatsoever. So I'm a huge fan of the braking on this Sentra without a doubt. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, you do tend to feel a little bit more of the road and compact cars. And that's definitely the case here in the Sentra, but it's to be expected, especially in an SR trim with the bigger wheels as well you're going to feel a little bit more of the road but that's fine people buying the sr trim it's going to be expected there so as cabin noise goes you get a little bit of road noise not a whole lot of wind noise whatsoever though and it is a pretty windy day today so a little bit of road noise i personally don't mind it though as far as steering feel goes that's one of my favorite parts about the Sentra, and it's something that i typically mention in every Sentra review that i do every single year 
steering feel is definitely on the heavier side of things. It's weighted on the heavier side, so it instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. And it's what you really want in a car like this. It's a little more playful, a little more fun to drive because of that. So comparatively speaking, if you were to compare the steering feel to the Toyota Corolla, it's night and day. The Corolla is such a loose steering feel, whereas the Sentra is a much, much heavier steering feel. So it's a lot more fun to drive on the back roads for that particular reason. So that is one of the things I absolutely love about the Sentra. Then touching on visibility, as far as that rear visibility goes, I can see perfectly fine out the back, so you're definitely not gonna have any issues there. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Nissan Sentra. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2023 Nissan Sentra finished in gray black roof is what the uh, window sticker says is the exterior color on this one. So we got a two-tone color scheme, which is pretty cool. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Sentra is actually made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number three, indicating that the 2023 Sentra is built and assembled in Mexico, in case you were curious. So let's go ahead and start up front. Nissan V-Motion front grille with active grille shutters coming standard, meaning those shutters will open and close depending upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time. To the sides, halogen headlights do come standard on the S and SV trim levels. You will get the automatic feature for all trim levels, meaning whenever it starts to get dark at a night, Sentra will automatically turn on those headlights for you. That's pretty convenient. And the SR trim that we have today, you're actually gonna get LED headlights. So if you wanted added illumination at night, SR trims are gonna be where it's at. And you do get LED daytime running lights with the SR and actually fog lights down below as well, which is pretty cool. And don't wanna add one thing for that midnight edition trim that we have today. Instead of the chrome view motion front grid, and the silver wheels, you're gonna get a bunch of black accents. So you're looking at a black V-Motion front grille. And then once we get to the side here in a second, you'll see the black wheels as well. And of course the black roof, but anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Very good looking front end here, but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of the Sentra, chrome belt line molding will come standard floating roof line on the C-pillar there. That's pretty cool, uh, kind of separating the body from the uh, roof there, so nice look to it. Body color power adjustable side mirrors will come standard. However, you will get gloss black side mirrors if you were to go with those SR trim levels. Heated side mirrors are gonna come on the SV trim level and up, and you will get integrated turn signals, again, if you you go with the SR trim. So then taking a look down at the wheel setup will differ very substantially amongst the trim levels. S trim is going to give you 16 inch steel wheels with covers, SV 16 inch aluminum alloys, SR 18 inch aluminum alloys, and then the midnight edition 18 inch aluminum alloys, but finished in a gloss black to tie together with all the other gloss black accents. So I love the side profile of the central. I think it looks so dang good, but it pretty much rounds out the side. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the center, all the way to the top, you will find a kind of a gloss black antenna up there. Just below that, rear spoiler is going to come standard on the SR trims, but it's going to be optional on the other trims. So you can still get it on those other trims if you wanted it. And I do like that there's gloss black badging to tie together with all the other black accents since we have the Midnight Edition. And actually does have the trim level badging in the back, so you can see the Midnight badging found on the rear trunk there. So that's pretty cool. Just below it all, traditionally, you will find a body colored rear diffuser. Again, that's going to be different. If you go with the Midnight Edition, it's going to be gloss black then. And there is a single exhaust outlet, and I love how it is finished in a very large chrome tip. That looks pretty dang good. But as always, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next then. Here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around to the back of the center, when it comes to opening up that rear trunk, uh, there is a button on the key fob, there's a button on the trunk itself, and there's actually a button by the driver's side left knee then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There's a cargo light back there. To my surprise, I actually found two grocery bag hooks, and really it's four grocery bag hooks with two little things that flip down from the top. So that was pretty cool to find. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you're actually going to find a spare 
spare tire then as well. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 34.7 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the rear seats there. There's a rear center armrest with cup holders that does come standard. There is a single USB charging port. So I do like that there's actually one back there because that isn't always the case with the competition, but unfortunately no rear air vents available for the Sentra. So then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating will come standard on the S and S V trim levels. However, you will find a sport cloth with orange stitching if you were to go with one of those SR trims. That of course is what you guys are looking at. Did would also mention that there is a quilted leather option for the SV trim level. I'll put a picture of that on the screen right now, but that is a very high end option looking a lot like the Maxima interior. So I did like that that's available at least. Heated front seats then are gonna be optional on the SV and SR trim levels as well. So overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it's not bad. Not the very most comfortable seats, but certainly not bad. So I didn't have any issues personally, but then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping and it actually telescoped out pretty darn far, which I am a big fan of. It is leather wrapped then for the SV and SR. I like the flat bottom to it as well. And if you wanted a heated steering wheel, that is gonna be optional on the SV trim level only. But so then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Nissan logo all the way to the top. Lock, unlock the button to pop the rear uh, trunk there. And then the circular button, that's gonna be a remote start that comes standard on the SV and SR trims. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels across the board. So all I'm going to do here is simply pump my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter. And so, once started up, when it comes to the gauges, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel, giving you things like a digital speedometer. Of course, there's how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's fuel economy, tire pressure information, outside temperature, radio information, safety settings. The list goes on. Pretty much everything you possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges, at least. But then make your way to overall interior quality, a power moonroof is going to be optional for the SV and SR. We don't have it, of course, but an overhead sunglass holder is going to come standard for all trim levels. I like that. Dual zone climate control is going to come in the SV and SR trim, so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures up front there. Frameless rear view mirror with homelink controls is going to be optional for $440 if you wanted that. Just in front of the shifter, you got a little bit of rubberized storage, 12 volt power outlet, and some charging ports there. To the right of the shifter, you have dual cup holders and a little bit of storage just behind the shifter. And within the center armrest, a ton of space. Honestly, that is a heck of a lot more space than both the Civic and Corolla within that center armrest. I will say that Sentra's got the beat there, but overall, I like the carbon fiber themed accents, although it's not true carbon fiber. It's a plastic finish, but I still like that it imitates it. It looks pretty darn good. I like all the orange accents in our SR trim level, at least as well. And these seats, I don't think I told you guys, it's kind of like a suede cloth combination and it feels super soft. So I do like that as well. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen here. Seven inch color touchscreen display is gonna come standard on the S trim level, but if you were to go with that SV or SR, you will get an eight inch color touchscreen display, but either way you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, either way you get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You can check out your driving statistics up there as well, along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are three of them available. So four speakers is gonna come standard on the S, six speakers then is gonna come standard on the SV and SR, but there is an optional eight speaker Bose sound system available as well. So we don't have the Bose unfortunately today. We do have the six speaker. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Honestly, the bass wasn't bad, and I traditionally do say that about Nissan. For whatever reason, they put a lot of emphasis on the bass with their sound system. So I, I didn't mind the bass for a six-speaker sound system. I'll put it that way. Clarity was okay, and I feel like I had it cranked up a good bit there, and it still wasn't as loud as... I otherwise could be, I guess I could say. So not the very loudest sound system, really good bass, okay clarity, I'll put it that way. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least, is when you do put the center in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IHS top safety pick if 
you go with one of the SR trim levels only because those are the ones that give you the LED headlights. But front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard a ton of advanced safety features even for the s you get forward collision warning autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection lane departure warning rear automatic braking a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert that usually doesn't come standard across the board by the way you guys i know it doesn't on the corolla i don't think it does on the civic either rear parking sensors driver attention monitoring system high beam assist and lane trace assist then as well but then if you were to go with the sv or sr trims you will in addition to that get adaptive cruise control so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Sentra, i love the steering feel it's weighted so much heavier than a lot of the competition so gives you much more of a playful feel it was more enjoyable to drive because of that Excellent braking as well, 60 to zero and 114 feet. Like I said, that's sports and good. That's like Genesis G70 braking. Like it's, it's incredible braking, I love it. Also, the fact that this thing starts at under $20,000, that's kind of unheard of these days. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video here, you don't get that with as much inflation that we have right now. So well done Nissan for keeping it under $20,000. It's incredibly a good looking sedan in my opinion as well. As far as room for improvement goes, I think if they added wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay, since this car is geared towards younger buyers, I think uh, younger buyers would definitely appreciate that. I would appreciate that. And LED headlights really should come standard at this point of the game. If you look at the Corolla and the Civic, they both get LED headlights coming standard even on the bottom trim level. So Nissan, maybe you could add that as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Century in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because you guys know that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.